Okay, so we're just going live. Wait for people to join. Hi, everyone. Okay, let's start. So um, today we have Annalie presenting um, an IELTS reading webinar, um, True, False, Not Given, and matching headings. Um, my name's Terence. I'm um, based at Integrate Education Group in London, and this webinar is for IELTSOnlineTest.com. Okay, Annalie is a very um, experienced um, IELTS um, teacher and examiner. She's been in the T uh, TEFL industry for over 25 years, and she's one of our um, frequent uh, webinar presenters. So I shall pass to you, um, Annalie. Okay, thank you very much, Terence. Hi, everybody. Say hi in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Um, yeah, and that's great if you if you're doing panelists and attendees, and then you know everybody can see your answer. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marisa. It's good to see people coming back that we've uh, seen before. Okay. Um, so, um, as Terence said, today we're looking at the reading. Um, and actually, although the reading is different for academic and general training in some ways, uh, everything here is relevant to both of them, okay? Um, so it doesn't matter which module you're doing, you will always have true, false, not given questions, you will always have um, matching headings uh, questions, okay? Um, so hi great some saudi and we've got india we've got kazakhstan cambodia that's fantastic um so there's three things we're going to look at today um as terence said so we've got two specific exercises we're looking at and those are the ones that um generally come up as being the more difficult ones or the kind of tricky ones hi bablu um, uh, but we're also going to have a look at a more general reading strategy, which is skimming, um, which, you know, helps you in a lot of ways to, to speed up your reading. Okay, so let's go into this in a bit more detail. Um, so there's three main types of reading skill that we use when we're doing the IELTS. Um, does anybody know what those different reading skills are? Okay, very good, Amina. So reading for details, also Rangini, skimming. Okay, very good, Amina. Scanning as well. Okay. Um, so if we have a look here, we've got skimming, scanning, and reading for details. Very good, Suzanne. Um, so when we say skimming, what do we mean by skimming? What's that? What kind of skill is that? Okay, very good. It's I Love Isles. That's a great name. Uh, yeah, so you're looking, or Andrea, hello, nice to see you again. Uh, you're looking for what we call the gist or the overall idea. Yeah, so it's a very quick general read. What are we looking for? Uh, how about, uh, yes, grasping the idea quickly? Isa, that's very nice. Um, how about scanning? What do we mean when we say scanning? Okay, very good, Karen. Yeah, so we're looking through for specific key words, okay, or specific information. Yeah, it's very fast. It's almost not really reading at all. It's just looking for certain words. Okay, yeah, very good. And what about reading carefully? How about that? What does that mean? Guess it's fairly clear. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Reading carefully means reading carefully. So generally after the first two skills or particularly after scanning, you need to read carefully, but that means a little bit before the keywords, a little bit after the keywords. Um, and that is going to tell you exactly what the answer is. Yeah, so exactly, Paulin Pali, it's looking for the specific detail. What exactly are they saying? Okay. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute, Shrist, about the order in terms of the question or the passage. So we will, we will come down to that. Okay, so you're generally going to use a combination of, of probably two of these skills in all of the exercises in IELTS. 
different combinations depending on the exercise, okay? Um, but for now, we're actually going to look at, at skim reading specifically and how you can use it, okay? Um, so it's helpful before you start doing any of the activities, any of the exercises, to have a very general idea of what the passage is about and where certain parts of the passage are, okay? That's actually going to speed up your finding when it comes to later on, okay? So just a little bit of information here. So as I said, general overview of the passage, no more than a couple of minutes, probably slightly less than that, okay? You're actually just looking for certain aspects of the passage. But as I said, this is going to make it faster later on for you to find your detail, okay? So critical at the beginning, obviously read the title and any subheadings, exactly, I love IELTS. What is the subject? Are there any subheadings? Sometimes there's a diagram and a picture as well. So if you look at that, that's also going to give you um, some very general idea of what we are talking about. So here we've got the first two paragraphs from the reading passage that we are going to look at for our true, false, not given exercise. Uh, so what kinds of subjects do you think we're going to be looking at in this passage? Give me some sort of keywords. What are, what are we looking at? What type of writing? If you look just, just at the title. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Allah, exactly. That's what I'm looking at. So we're lo this is going to be a history article. We're looking at a specific period of time in history. We're looking at a specific artifact from history. Okay, good. We've got the location. We're going back a long way. So immediately, you know, starting to get an idea of what you're going to read about in this passage okay it's almost like kind of just preparing your words yeah archaeology history those are the kind of words that should be coming up in your mind when you're looking at that title okay um so it will give you the topic and you know you might get an idea of how that's going to be organized okay so very very important right at the beginning okay um so We've had a look at the title. Uh, then you can also skim read the exercises, okay? So before you go into the detail of getting the answers, you can skim read to find key information, okay? This is, um, this is not about, just a minute, hi. This is not about finding the answers at the moment. This is about finding some key words which are going to help speed up your location of finding the answers later on. Exactly, I love us. It's only about locating. It's not about getting the answers at the moment. Um, there, there can be a picture high in the, in the reading passage. It's quite common. Probably depends on the topic. If it's about maybe a specific species of animal that maybe you don't know the name you know that's not going to be a very common word in english so you get the picture of the animal so you know what we're talking about you know from the picture rather than from knowing the name of the animal so it's really just going to depend yeah okay um we'll come to the reading of the questions in in a minute Keywords are going to be in the questions. They're not going to be particularly in the title. The, the title is just going to give you an overview. Okay, so we look at the questions. So what do we look at first? What kind of exercises are we going to have to do in this, uh, um, in this type of passage? Okay, so we look here very quickly. True, false, not given. Okay. Coming to keywords in a minute, Sarusha, <laughs> everybody's getting ahead of me. Um, so what's the type of exercise first? Okay. Um, and then look very quickly so, for some obvious keywords, very obvious keywords here. So that's going to be names of people, names of places, dates, 
proper nouns generally because they have capitals, so they're very, very easy to find. Um, but again, yes, there's some good words coming up there. Anything kind of unusual like skeletons or grave goods, that's very specific information. It's not likely to be a synonym. They're likely to be using the same word. Um, then that's going to be an easy to find in the passage. Okay. Um, so in number one, what would you say is the first, is, are the main keywords in number one? Okay, in the first one. Yeah, grave goods definitely are going to be important here. I think also, yeah, written records of grave goods. Think about the kinds of words that are very specific that are gonna help you find the right place and are gonna help you differentiate this piece of information from other pieces of information. Uh, so for example, discovered, that's probably going to come up quite a lot in a passage about archeology. span So that might not help you that much, but written records and grave goods are likely to be only talked about in one small area, okay? So keep it to those words that are gonna help you find the location. Remember, it's all about location at the moment. Okay, how about number two? What do you think would be the key words? Okay, yes, so very clearly, an yang, we've got a place here that's going to be very far, easy to find in the passage. And skeletons, as we said, um, that's probably going to be easy to find as well. But even just an yang tomb would be enough, okay? Uh, remember, this is just about finding the information, okay? Oops, I'm ahead of you there. <laughs> so in the second one, yeah, I think that's a bit obvious. Terracotta Army, again, capital letters, name, easy to find in the passage. Okay. And the last one, okay, yeah, Shun's ahead of us, King Tutankhamun, and what else? Okay, okay, and the Qin Emperor. If we've got any Chinese kind of people here, you can correct my spelling and my pronunciation. Um, so those, again, we've got capital letters, we've got names, we've got things that are easy to find. So remember, this is just the keywords that are easy to find. It's not about the specific information keywords that are going to help you answer the question at the moment. Okay. So have a very quick look at the question types and make a quick note of any very obvious keywords in the sentence. Okay. Then another very useful way to get a good idea of what's in the passage, first of all, so content and also how it's organized, okay? And that is topic sentences. So topic sentences is something we talk about a lot in, in IELTS. It comes up in the writing a lot as well. So this is really going to help you get your information more quickly, okay? So you read the topic sentence. What is the topic sentence? Anyone, what, can you tell me what the topic? Yes, it's the first sentence in each paragraph, okay? So, yeah, and sometimes it can be the last one. <laughs> they are the light in our darkness, you're absolutely right. That's very true. Okay, so if you just have a very quick look at the topic sentence, that's gonna help you to work out what the main idea of that topic is and you know, of how then we're gonna find the information later on, okay? And also what we can do is then underline those keywords, those kind of places and names that we saw in the exercises, okay? So that's why you have a look at the exercises first. You're just not to know what, you know, you're going to have to look for, but just look for some keywords and find them in the passage, okay? Um, so, as we said, first sentence is the topic sentence. Looking very quickly there, can you see any key words that we saw in our exercise on the true, false, not given? Okay, good, very clearly, an yang really stands out there. So that's something that we can see. 
and as we go through we'll see all of those others yeah and we've got grave goods as well okay so we can see An Yang. So we can see that if we're looking at the first paragraph, we're thinking about the time period specifically. Okay, that's our focus is the time period according to the dynasty. Whereas if we look at B, we are looking at a specific tomb now. So we've changed our um, focus slightly. Okay, so again, We've got An Yang, and again, we've got grave goods, these very specific, almost technical words. Those are going to be easy to find, and they're usually not going to be synonyms. Yeah, if that is the name for it. Okay. Another very, very important thing to do, um, and this is particularly important for the matching headings exercise, okay, is to summarize the paragraphs in your own words okay this means that you then you detach yourself from being dependent on the words in the paragraph okay and this really helps your your brain kind of open up and then see the differences see the synonyms see the paraphrases and not be so fixated on individual words that come up that's one of the real key problems with the reading is, you know, being stuck on particular vocabulary instead of looking at the idea. Okay. Um, so thinking of things, you know, putting things in your own words, paraphrasing yourself is really going to help you find those paraphrases in the reading passage. So um, what are we, I already kind of talked about this. So what are we really looking at in paragraph A? If you had to just put that in your own words, in a couple of words, what would we talk about there? Uh, yeah, okay, so we're talking about a specific time period. It's quite general, talking about those ruins. Yeah, so it's the Shang dynasty that we're talking about. And then if we look down at paragraph B now, what are we talking about? Yes, okay, this, this particular tomb uh, i think it was a military general but now we're focusing on one specific tomb okay so we know anything related to the, Sh the shang dynasty is probably going to be in the first paragraph anything related uh, um that's you know about fu hao is going to be in the second paragraph okay all right so Let's have a look at this one. Um, so if we just look at the topic sentence only here, what are we going to be looking at in C? What is our topic here? Yes, okay, so now we've moved on to the terracotta army mm -hmm. and some findings, but the terracotta army is the key, key word that we're looking at there because that's going to come up in some of the questions okay probably in all of the exercises there'll be something about the terracotta army chin emperor yeah is also there as well so that's the kind of thing that you can highlight okay um any keywords there that we looked at when we were looking at our sentences okay yeah so we've also got Tutankhamun. Okay, and we've also got the Chin Emperor, we've got the Terracotta Army, okay? So basically if you find some keywords in the exercises and just highlight them, then find some keywords in the passage, then finding the information, locating the information from the question to the passage is going to be a lot easier. Basically, you've got a set of highlighted keywords in your exercise and a set of highlighted keywords in your reading passage, and then you're transferring across. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't take you so much time. It's actually going to save you a lot of time okay because it's looking for the information which takes the time yeah 
uh, not so much answering the question, but it's people reading through very carefully, very slowly, instead of going bum bum, terracotta army there, terracotta army there. Okay, fantastic. I can just look across this. Yeah, okay. It's you just got to find that way of doing it. Okay, this works for all of the different questions. Okay, this is not related to any specific type of exercise. This is a general strategy to do at the beginning to just find the information quickly. Okay, think of it as having two sets of information. You've highlighted the keywords in each one. So then you can transfer from one to the other much more quickly, okay? And you also know what the topic of the paragraph is, which again is going to find, you're gonna find the information much more quickly, okay? Coming to matching headings now, Deanne, okay? All right, so let's just move on from that. Um, so we're talking about the Terracotta Army in C, okay? So just to review that and put that together, okay? So a couple of minutes, really, this does not take longer than a couple of minutes and it helps you for the whole exercise, the whole passage, which remember is about 20 minutes. So it's not percentage wise, it's not very much, okay? And it gives you a main idea of the passage. It gives you the main idea of each paragraph and it helps you locate some very obvious keywords. I really wanna stress obvious keywords. You're not searching for everything. Names, dates, places, very specific technical words. That's all you could possibly be looking for, nothing more than that, okay? And those are the ways that we do it. So the title, skim reading the title, skim reading the question, skim reading the topic sentence and highlighting those keywords that we found in the exercises. Okay. All right, so that is just a general strategy, but it's very important to have that strategy correct to save you time later on. Okay, so true, false, not given and matching headings is exactly what we're going to look at now. Um, so it will always look like this, okay? You'll have your reading passage, your task. They give their definition, not that helpful of a definition of true, false, not given. And then you have a list of uh, statements, usually four or five statements, okay? And remember, you've already got your keywords highlighted, okay? So we already know exactly where we're going to be looking for this information, okay? So this is true, false, not given. In some cases you will see yes, no, not given. So can anyone tell me what the difference is between true, false, not given and yes, no, not given? When do we use one? Okay, very good, Hamada. So true, false, not given. Okay, good, everybody's there. That's a factual passage so you will have some passages which are just facts and then it will be true false not given okay if you have a passage often passage three which is actually somebody giving their opinion on something then it will be down as yes no not given okay no you can't so the strategy is the same the exercise is the same but if you write yes when it should be true it will be wrong, okay? So don't confuse them in terms of how you put the answers. You must put the right format, okay? Uh, so a lot of people say, oh yeah, true, false, not given, yes or no, that's the same, isn't it? I just put whatever I like. No, okay? You have to put the one that is in the exercise, okay? So um, let's have a look at this in more detail. Okay, so yeah, facts versus opinions. Okay, so all you need to write on the uh, on the answer is, for example, T F N G. Okay, or Y N N G, but do not confuse them. Make sure that you are using the right one. Okay, 
Um, okay, so again, we've got our keywords. Yes, we're coming to that and go. It is in the same order. So we've already got our keywords. If it's a name or something technical, it's very likely that it's going to be exactly the same in the, um, in the passage. So you're just looking for the same information. Something that is not so technical, it's a more general vocabulary, you will have to, you'll be looking for synonyms, okay? Or changes of word formation or something like that, okay? But these words we've highlighted, they're gonna be the same. Okay. So we've got our keywords here. So let's go through bit by bit, okay, and see how it works, okay? Um, so we already found grave goods um, when we were looking before, because that's very specific, okay? So we've got that keyword, but we've also written records is also quite important, quite specific there. So can you find a place where grave goods and something like written records is in the same area? Whoa, hold on, don't go ahead of yourself. Let's find, where are we going to look? Uh-huh, yeah, okay, so we've got grave goods, we've got record, okay, yeah, we've got oracle texts as well, which again, texts, records, very similar. Yeah, so we know we're looking down in this area, okay, end of paragraph B, okay, okay. So now that we've found the right place in the passage, we need to then um, read carefully. So this is the reading for detail or reading carefully section, okay? To find out whether it's true, false, or not given. Okay, very good guys, you're doing very well. Um, yeah, so is it the same? Is it different? Is it not given? as everyone's got here, and this is, tends to be the easiest one, it's true, okay? And confirmed is the key word because confirmed, proved to be accurate, synonyms of each other, okay? So the other part of the statement, not the key words that you've used to find the information, but the other part of the statement, that is going to be where you get your paraphrase. And the paraphrase is what is going to tell you if it's true or false or not given. Okay. So um, that's where you get your reading for detail information. Okay. That's really, really important. Yeah, texts are, are written, the oracle is the type of temple, but again, this is not something that you need to know the meaning of. If you can see that texts are written records, then the rest of it is not really important, okay? All right, let's have a look at the second one. So there was a question earlier on um, about the order, so, uh, it's always in the same order, okay? So once you've got to one stage and you've found that information, so we've got confirmed by Oracle text, you only need then to move on from that point. You're never going to go back, okay? So once you get that bit, you can cross off that part of the, um, of the article and you can make sure that you have moved on, okay? Um, Right, so let's, we need to move on to the next question. So we found human skeletons. We're still talking about An Yang, so we know we're still in the same area, okay? So um, let's have a look directly after the bit that we looked at before. Okay, hello, hi, Mohammed. how are you doing? Um, so we can see here that we've got skeletons we've got human slightly different Ooh, think about it think about it okay and now we have to work out by reading carefully okay to understand the meaning so in the statement how were the people killed don't let's think about it first how were the people killed in the statement 
in what situation? Okay, good, Koala, they were killed in a war. If we look at the passage, were the people killed in a war? Okay, good, no, they were killed by sacrifice. Is that the same thing, war and sacrifice? Are they synonyms of each other? No, they're not synonyms of each other. You can't be killed in a war and sacrificed at the same time, okay? So the answer is false, yeah. Also, similarly, they talk about soldiers and here they talk about slaves. So the answer must be false. It's false on two different facts. So it can't possibly be anything other than false. So we have contradictory information there. And that's the really key thing with the false. For it to be false, it has to be two things that contradict each other. They cannot be true at the same time. Okay? You've got war, you've got sacrifice. They're different. It's false. It would have to be, for example, battle would be a synonym for war. So if it said battle, then you could say it's true. Those are synonyms that mean the same thing. But here they are definitely, they can't possibly both be true at the same time. Okay. Uh, well, it's all traps if you think about it like that. But it's, it's also, you're looking at language here. That's all you're looking at. Just war, sacrifice, nothing else, okay? Soldiers, slaves, different, okay? So, who's here? So, yeah, we've got soldiers and we've got slaves, we've got killed in war and we've got human sacrifice. We have contradictory information, okay? I'll come to not given in a minute, yeah? Okay. So let's move on to the third one. So again, we've already done our skim reading. So we already know where we need to look for the terracotta army. Okay. Um, so it was discovered by people who lived nearby. There's a bit of a typo there. Okay, very good guys. You're moving on ahead of this one. Okay, so we've got the soldiers, we've got the terracotta army. So we know we're looking in this area, okay? Then we're looking for synonyms, so words that mean the same, but they're explained in a different way. So what are the synonyms here? You're all right, very good, it's true. Okay, very nice, Amina. We've got accidentally and we've got by chance. Exactly the same meaning, just a different way of, um, of expressing it. We've also got people who lived nearby and we've got local. Exactly. Okay. So again, synonyms meaning is the same. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. Yeah. So there's two types of keywords. This is really important. There's the keywords that help you to locate the information. And then there's the keywords which give you the answer, which are always in the form of synonyms. Okay, and they will have the same meaning or they will have a different meaning. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Okay, so again, we've already got our key words. We found Tutankhamun, we found the Chin Emperor. Okay, yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Okay, very good. So um, now we're looking for the key word, the that gives us the answer in the statement, and that's going to be bigger, okay? So that's the only other word there that's going to give us some information. And size, so we're talking about size. Okay, very good, very good, guys, yeah. So this is not given, because although it talks about the numbers of the chariots, it talks about the numbers of the horses, but it does not, give you any comparison of size exactly, I love Isles. There is no comparison of the size of the tomb, okay? Yeah, don't confuse the size of the chariots with the size of the tomb. The tomb is what we're talking about now, okay? Um, so, and it's very, very common in the not given to have comparatives. Okay, 
The chariots is like the, um, the vehicle, if I can put it that way. You have horses in front. The soldiers are in the chariot. It's got big wheels and it goes along. Okay. Um, so not given means that it could be true. We don't know. Okay. So it's not the same information. It's not contradictory information. It's just different information okay it could be bigger i can't say that it's smaller it's definitely not telling me that it's smaller than the chin emperors it's not telling me that it's bigger than the chin emperors it's just not giving me any information on that okay yeah if you like it's unclear <laughs> to be honest unclear uh, you know not given means it's not clear or i don't know so what you need to do is to ask yourself could it be true okay and if the answer is it could be true i don't know then you've got to put not given okay if it's false then exactly the opposite information the contradictory information is in the passage okay all right um can you stop advertising, Kapil, please, do you mind, while I'm doing this? It's uh, not really appropriate quite here, okay? So it compares the number of soldiers and chariots, but it does not talk about size, okay? So we cannot say if it's true or not. Okay, I will explain again, because this is really important, but we, <laughs> we also need to move on to matching headings. Um, okay, so... You have to look, compare the information in the statement and in the passage. If the information is exactly the same, but it's written using paraphrasing, using different words, then it's true. Okay. If the information in the statement and the information in the passage are contradictory, that means that they cannot both be true. They cannot both be true one of them has to be wrong okay then you put false all right if the information and the st and the in the statement and the information in the passage can both be true but we don't know whether we don't know whether they are the same or different then it is not given okay the information is different it's not contradictory it's just different okay um yeah i mean it's it's it, you can say it's information not found but i don't think that that helps people because everyone says well it does say something about that don't think about it that way think about could it be true i don't know if it's true or not so therefore i'm going to put not given okay that's the important thing. If they could both be true, they're both looking slightly different things, then you are going to put not given. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's summarize this before we go on to the matching headings. <laughs> We've got a bit of time. So underline the keywords in the question. Okay. You've done this originally. You found the keywords, which are the location keywords. Then you find the other words in the statement which are going to be tell you where the answer, and then they're going to be the synonyms. Okay, find the information, read it very carefully, compare the information in the statement and the information in the passage. Are they the same? Are they contradictory? or are they just different pieces of information okay same true contradictory false um different information not given okay uh number six is really really important okay very frequently you will find in the true false not given questions things words like the majority of the minority of everybody nobody these kind of quantifiers uh bigger than smaller than so using comparatives um always frequently never those are actually really important words in the true false not given because those are the ones where they're tricking you 
you know so saying that everybody does something is not the same as saying that most people do it okay so be very very careful about that okay and make sure you're writing yes no not given or true false not given and you're not mixing them up that you won't get it right okay all right let's have a look now at matching headings so to have a look at the example here so you get the task you get a list of headings you get your passage and then we have our answer sheet okay there are always more headings than there are paragraphs so you're not going to use all of the uh, all of the headings okay uh, you just write the no roman numeral so you see where it's, it's like i and then two i's and then three i's don't write out the full heading it's not necessary it's going to waste a lot of time okay so just the roman numeral like this these are not the answers by the way okay uh, that's just examples so how do we do the matching headings okay so you can have a quick look through the headings just to get an idea of, of what they're talking about that you don't have to do that you go to the paragraph a okay you read the whole thing through so you're skim reading all of it and then you put it in your own words this is really 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 important you've got to break yourself free from the words in the passage so just decide the subject of this is but um give it your own heading okay then you compare your heading with the headings that are given and then you find the one that matches the closest okay that's the way to do it okay if you just compare you're going to get confused you know there's going to be words that are going to lead you to think it's one thing when it's not so really really important summarize it in your own words and then go to the headings and read down the headings if you're not sure move on because then it's probable that a later paragraph will give you a specific answer so you might you know say oh i'm not sure about between one and two but then later on you're like oh that's definitely two there so i can go back and i can put one at that point okay because i don't need yeah i wouldn't i think that the best thing to do is to go to the paragraph first read it summarize it in your own word then look at the headings that means that you won't be you won't be prejudiced by the head you won't be tempted by the headings okay you've already got an idea in your own mind okay but don't spend i mean this is true about all of the exercises don't spend hours and hours on on if you're not sure because you're just wasting time just keep moving on okay all right so let's have a look so if we look at paragraph a um and we're talking about what kinds of things are we talking about in a don't give me the answer tell me what 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 kind of topic are we talking about in a if you had to put that in your own words what would you say i know you may have the answer but what what's what's it talking about okay good it's talking about data and it's talking about yeah the numbers going up and down okay we talk about a drop and then we talk about a peak okay um so yeah very good those who have already got it the answer is two okay we've got fluctuations which is a word that we use to describe graph movement you could be using it in your task ones and we've got words that also describe graph movement in our a and that's the key area it's not a detail it's actually what the whole thing is about okay so fluctuations peak uh falling to those kind of things okay so we've got rid of that one that one's pretty clear let's move on to the second one let's not put the answer up so have a look at the b anybody know what a bittern is by the way this is where you would probably have a picture to help you tell you what a bit of bittern is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bird. It's a bird. Yes. Turn around. Um, but again, it's, it's a bit like a chicken. Yeah, it is a bit like a chicken. 
Um, okay, very good, Cyril. So we're beginning to calculate the numbers. Okay, um, so there's some kind of starting going on there, talking about certainty. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, so if we look at our key, so our first challenge, so first challenge, beginning again, you're just finding, you know, these um, the same information. Then we've got numbers, we've got count. So we've got lots of synonyms for calculate and for numbers, okay? Uh, monitoring would be, yeah, you monitor in order to find out the numbers, yeah? In this sense, not necessarily always, okay? We can move on quite quickly here because we've um, not got much time left. Um, so how about C? If you looked at C, be careful with this one. This is a bit of a tricky one. Okay, think about what are we really looking at here? Remember, topic sentences usually give you the... Yeah, this one is a bit tricky. So this would be one of the ones where you might want to note down two of them and then come back afterwards when you were more sure. Okay, so I think you've got the, you've got one and, you know, some people are also looking at, uh, yeah, so at seven. Yeah. But the answer is one. Okay. Because it's not so specific as to be talking about the reed birds, but it is talking about habitat. It does actually mention the word habitat. It talks about um, breeding and it says, based on this work, broad recommendations. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, they've done some research and then they've made some decisions on the research how I would that's how I would summarize it and we've got words like funding project findings research these are all words that you know belong in the same area okay yeah research recommendation project are all words that go together okay so we can get rid of that one okay and then what about D Okay. What are we talking about here? What's, there's a word that comes up again and again and again through here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, June. Yes, so we are looking at the reed beds here. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so it comes up how many times? One, two, three, four times they mention the word reed bed. So this is not a detail of the paragraph. This is the overall topic of the paragraph. Okay. And I think, I mean, I think probably if I was doing this, I would probably, you know, be not sure for C. I think, well, it's probably I, but it might be, or it's probably one, it might be seven. But then when I come to the next paragraph, I'm sure this is seven, so I can go back and be certain that C is one. If you're not sure, make a note of the ones you think it is, and then move on, and then later paragraphs will probably help you. Okay. So that is that one. And then we've got two more. So have a look at this one. Okay, we've only got four left now. What is paragraph E talking about? Okay, very good. Cyril is very much on top of it. Okay, so don't be, uh, you know, trapped by the fact that it mentions chicks. Okay, that's not really, that's detail. That's not the overview. Okay, we are talking about diet. We're talking about starvation. Okay, um, and we're talking about what happens when they don't get enough food. Okay, um, I'll just give you the last one because we're coming to the end. Okay, so we talk about protection. We've got words like secure, sustainable, vulnerable, suitable. So all of the words related to protection. Okay, and that's a bitten. <laughs> if you weren't sure, that's what a bitten looks like. Okay, I'll just move through that. I'll just give that up. Okay, so 
Can we take some questions, Terence? Yeah, sure. So I'm just looking in the uh, Q&A section. I didn't even know what a bittern was, by the way. So I'm very impressed that some of the students uh, knew what <laughs> Me that too, was. me too. It's not an easy word, is it? Yeah. Um, so uh, first question we've got here, um, uh, a question from Amina. Uh, if the question will ask to write yes, no, um, can you use true or false instead? No, definitely not. Definitely not. You need to be accurate. If it's yes, no, not given, write yes, no, not given, or Y-N, not N-G. Yeah. If it's true, false, not given, write those. They will not mark them right because the examiner has a key and they have to follow that key. They don't have any ability to make their own judgments about it. If it's not in the key, they can't mark it right and it won't be in the key if it's the difficult one. Great. Um, a question from Yash. She, uh, I make a lot of mistakes in matching heading questions. Any advice on how to improve this? Um, Mainly people are making mistakes because they're confusing the detail with the overall idea, okay? And also that looking for just actually matching words rather than, you know, thinking about what does it mean. So this is why I would say just look at the paragraph, read it in your own words, summarize it in your own words, and then find what matches, okay? And be very wary about just thinking about keywords or detail that's where you're going to get confused mm -hmm. okay um can we write true or t in the uh, answer sheet uh yeah you can write t f and n g that's completely fine right okay um question here from um man meet is it necessary that the answer lies in the first two and last two lines of the paragraphs while finding headings um, it's more of an overview, but the topic sentence generally tells you the topic of the par paragraph. Obviously, that's, that's why it's called topic sentence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's going to give you more information, but I would not read only the topic sentence. I would read the whole thing, skim read it, and just, you know, summarize it in your own words. That's really the key information here. Okay, we've got a couple of questions about the online, uh, the computer-based IELTS test. Are you familiar with that? Uh, 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 I, I set it up in Kenya, actually. Okay, great. A long then. time ago. <laughs> so here we go. So um, we've got a question. Um, is there an answer sheet in the um, computer-based test to transfer answers? Um, and then a second one here that says, um, do, is there a paper and pen? And then um, is there as another question, um, can we highlight the key words on the paragraph um, in the real IELTS exam? i sorry, that one's not um, about computer-based. Oh, right, yeah. Um, okay, in terms of the computer-based, everything is on the computer, okay? Absolutely everything, the reading, listening, and writing, the, and, you know, the passage is there, the questions are there, and the answer sheet is there on. So it's pure online work. There is no, you're not looking at it on the computer and then writing your answers. You're doing everything on the computer. So there's no other part of it that is, is, is written that it involves paper. Okay. Okay. Question from Allah. Um, I have my test this Saturday. How do I take more reading uh, practice? Um, uh, how do I know if I'm ready or not? Um, well, I would suggest, uh, Ala, to take as many tests on the website, um, IELTSonlinetest.com, as you can um, before that time. I guess you're not going to know if you're ready until you actually take it and find out your score. Uh, but the answers um, that uh, you'll get on the website will give you an indication of, you, of your um, band score. Um, okay. Um, Dun, dun, dun. I'm just looking through some more questions here. Um, from um, Shrisht, as we know, the headings are in a pattern, so we need to go back uh, talking about the, the headings there. Does that make sense to you, Annalie? Uh, not quite sure what you're saying. Okay. I mean, because, yeah. because it's matching headings, there's not going to be, I mean, they can't be in the right order, so... 
but but in terms of how you answer it, I would say you start with paragraph A, summarize it, find the heading, move down to paragraph B. So you're going to be working through the headings one by one, but obviously the headings themselves are not going to be in the right order. It's not, not possible. Yeah. yeah. A, a question. I'll, I'll take a final question here from uh, Masood. Uh, can you please clarify the difference between Y and NG and TFNG? Um, okay, TFNG is used when the passage is based on facts. Um, so is it a true fact or a false fact? And yes, no, not given is based on a passage where there is an opinion um, which is given by the author. Uh, and yes would be, does it agree with the author's opinion? No, it's contradictory to the author's opinion and not given is the same that, you know, it could be true, but we don't, the information is not there for us to say. Okay, oh, okay great. So there's lots of questions that we don't have time to answer. However, um, we do have a question and answer session um, every week in the webinar, so please attend our future webinars and make sure you ask your question uh, early, because the earlier you ask it, the, the more chance we have to um, answer it. And also you can email questions um, to our email address, which is hi at ieltsonlinetest.com. And we're now actually starting a video series on YouTube, um, and I'll put the YouTube link in the chat. Um, and we'll be answering some short questions on our um, uh, YouTube channel as well. So please subscribe there. Okay, so um, thank you very much to uh, Annalie today. Fantastic um, session. Um, please. So please support the website. So we do have a few paid services on the website. Um, and if you if you can't afford the paid services, then please just um, share the website with your friends. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and see you next time. Good luck, everyone. Bye. And good bye luck, bye. everyone, in your test. Bye, bye. Good luck. Bye. Cheers.